wishing to know the reality and meaning of Ayatul Kursi. Can you speak about the Kursi? Uh, then those are those are difficult to on command give talks of Ayatul Qur'an. So that has to be the tajalli of that moment and to, to go into that. We have from the talks you can Google the Divine Wi-Fi, Mandaladi Yashfahu that Allah no one can encompass the knowledge that Allah is giving that reality except what it wants to understand of that knowledge. We gave that talk in, in the talk uh, on Divine Wi-Fi but uh, yeah that we have to do under the tajalli of, of that night inshaAllah if that comes. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam If we don't show our anger but feel angry inside, is it bad for our spirituality and are we accountable for that? <clears throat> if, Walaykum As Salaam, if, if we don't show our anger, Mawlana Shaykh would often give talks of, if you're angry swallow it and people come out and I think modern psychiatry which is under that who, not the heavenly who, <laughs> they use the same signs of snakes, is based on letting your anger out, your anger has to come out, you have to get like pillows and beat each other. Everything about their teaching is that this fire has to come out and anybody who knows when bad characters are fire, any fire that you let out it only grows because you're giving that fire oxygen and all it needs to grow is a little bit more oxygen. This way of reality is Allah is training is that put the fire out, swallow it. Don't mention it, don't talk about it, don't give it any fire, don't give it any air, don't give it any breath and any life because it will grow and if it grows like a fire it goes out of control. If you've ever seen a fire that you start by accident and all of a sudden the amber moves and everything catches, it's not something you can control anymore. So to take your fire and swallow it is your training, you swallow it, swallow it, swallow it and that you begin to learn how to burn inside with your anger and which you turn to Allah you go into your sujood and you say, Ya Rabbi grant me a strength in which to overcome this anger. If Allah turns this anger of qadab into the anger of himma and zeal makes it a fire in which the heart burns to do more, to do good. So our whole life is about the control of anger and, and how to swallow it. People think, I have to respond to it, I have to teach the person before they're going to do something and no, no, you don't have to teach anyone anything because nothing really happening to you other than what Allah is writing in the play. Because then you lost your, your tawheed. Why anger brings somebody to kufr is because the minute you're angry you forgot your tawheed. Your tawheed was that nothing but Allah nothing is happening to us except by Allah's order and command. So the minute qadab comes for a believer will take him out of that understanding and immediately become angered at somebody and this person did this when in reality no Allah did that. But the anger took you out of your, your calm and understanding of belief. It's easy to talk about it in a talk. As soon as it happens how shaitan plays makes the person angry, they want to respond and say and then they forgot their understanding and they lost their level of faith because they lost the understanding of tawheed that this was from Allah so those who are under their training and ask training to be from the people of wadud, they know that this is the greatest difficulties that they put an outside reminder, they put a band on their hand to remember that they're working on anger, they keep themselves in wudu. If their mouth is, is too much then they put a lollipop in their mouth so that they don't reply. People who cannot control their fingers and, and making ridiculous emails, they should like lock up their fingers or put away their phone or 
put some sort of a message on the phone that don't start texting and typing and don't, don't use your fingers now in place of your mouth. So all of these have to be controlled otherwise those same people the ones say, no, nothing's ever happening, nothing's ever growing, yeah you're not controlling anything, how can it grow when all the bad character day by day is just flourishing? Your, your, your anger and bad character has become like a janga, like a jungle. You're, you're supposed to make it bare and burdened and cut down so it looks like a, a field that has been sort of decimated, there's nothing there of it. But people want their bad character to grow like the Amazon jungle, yeah, it's growing everywhere. Then the company say, oh look uh, why well, nothing happened to me, uh, nothing ever changed for me, no knowledge came to me. So inshaAllah Allah would give us strength to, to come against all these bad characteristics. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa If certain things prevent us from doing donations and supporting the center, can we give the same intended sadaqah here in our living area? Walaykum As Salaam, most definitely. If you're living in, in India and, and parts of Pakistan, if you can reach to the Pakistani group there and give to them, alhamdulillah. If you're living in areas that are sort of impoverished and in, in great demand of difficulty, definitely go buy some hamburgers, buy some food, buy some groceries, the staples of, of life, you know, rice and oil and, and basic necessities and give those out. If you have excess income and excess revenue and you want to do good and, and help, it's like our, our machine is a huge machine that has a you know, big engine. It doesn't get full with a little bit, it has to keep moving you know, from TV, from shows, from books, from websites, from, from the charity works, from all of these projects. So people who have, have extra and excess then alhamdulillah those whom have a, a very uh, specific amount that they can part with and they're in communities that are in great need then alhamdulillah make a project and and feed the people locally and help people that are in need locally. And this is a, a month in which the immensity of blessings and the immensity and the reality of zakat. And we have talks on zakat and the greatest difficulty on the nation now is if they don't pay their zakat, they don't pay what's a, of a cleansing of their rizq and their sustenance and that that portion doesn't get out to the people to help and to do these projects in the way of Allah and in the way of Sayyidina Muhammad We have talks on that when people's character are not changing and they're making their rizq, they're making their money, they're doing all of that but their character is not changing because their rizq and why zaki is means purification. Their rizq is a contamination. It's like working all day long in a biological lab and, and every type of virus is touching you. Your work is coming with all burdens, the sustenance you bring comes with all these burdens. When you don't zaki and you don't clean these burdens they begin to manifest on people so their bad character remains. They want to drink, they want to smoke, they want to be angry, they want to do many things and they keep emailing that, I'm not changing. And that's why Allah gave that zakah and salah are linked together, means the one whom gives and he prays because he's purifying himself from what Allah has given to him in his life. When he gives in the way of Allah <coughs> all the bad becomes good and purifies his soul, purifies his body and all of the najis and dirtiness begins to leave with that zakah. And as a result the person becomes lighter and purified and that's why we gave in Surat Al-Munafiqoon on the month of Rajab the surah that comes and teaches that when the person dies the only thing they're asking from Allah not to go back and make their salah, not to go back and take care of their children, not to go back and do anything other than, Ya Rabbi let me go back and give all my wealth all my wealth away, give it back and to become from salihin and to become from pious and righteous servants of Allah They recognize that only in their state of death because of the immensity of 
what it cleans from the body and what Allah will relieve the servant of difficulties and hardships and pains and sufferings and sicknesses in physical dunya and in akhirah most definitely inshaAllah. As salaam Ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa uh, If we are trying to establish the faqr and connection with the shaykh from a distance, should we check with him from time to time to make sure we are doing it right? You can, uh, from a distance everybody should be doing. The ones that are at a distance are giving very nice questions that show the people who are very close that they're not doing as much. So the good thing about these question and answers is because our local people are listening and saying, well I don't experience this, I, I don't experience that, I don't feel this, I don't feel that. Because those whom are near, like we said before, the ones whom are in Mecca they don't do hajj. They take it for granted the relationship that they have. So the distance and time is a barakah and a blessing to you for those whom are distant and participating, they're donating, they're giving, they're supporting, they're meditating. And those are the ones with all these amazing questions, I feel this, I feel that, I, I'm sensing all these things. As soon as they sit for tafakkur they, they're emailing, they're heating up, they're feeling the, the presence and the nazar and all of that is an immense blessing. And all you have to check because the tafakkur instructions, email us, I don't know how to do tafakkur, we sent you the one letter that has the, the exact guidance on how to do it. All you have to check back is that I'm making the connection. I'm not listening to any of the imaginal things that are coming in my tafakkur. I'm asking only to reach to the ocean of power and is, is everything still okay? Because it's not about you go and um, meditate and, and now I'm having all these imaginal things, I saw this, I saw that. So those sort of divorce yourself from talking about those imaginal understandings because those can lead you in very dangerous directions. When they come just say, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. I just want to enter into the ocean of power. This ocean of power it's proof if you be dressed by the ocean of power and you be dressed by the ocean of power. We said two nights ago, what's the proof of rijal that been dressed by ocean of power? Khuluq, khuluq. Because our master, what is the title, what is the title that Allah gave? When you want to know our master how great his station is, Allah said, Khuluqul Azeem. Not I dressed him only by power, I gave him secrets of Qur'an, I did all of these things. But Allah's stamp of reality is Khuluqul Azeem. That for Allah whose azimat is something that cannot be understood above anything that we understand of creation, Allah's lending that Azeem to the reality of Prophet saying it's immense beyond imagination his character Adam and Rabbi fa ahsanu fi ta'teeb And then Prophet came to us and said, I'm only been sent to perfect your character and, and give the goodness of what Allah is pleased with. Islam was not the was not a, a, the, the prize in, in the sense as, a, as the end goal. But Prophet brought the deen to perfect your character, your character was the end and the result. He didn't come to say, here's the Islam, now you go around saying, I have Islam, I, I conquered the heavens, I'm, I'm the heavenly servant of Allah But the magnificence of what Prophet is bringing is a religion that will take you from your haywan to ridwan. You'll lose your animal badness and the animal uh, kingdom and enter into the paradise kingdom. So Islam was a means, it wasn't the end goal, I just, oh I got Islam now I'm the greatest person on earth. No, now you got Islam is now your chance to at least survive and leave the animal kingdom. So that's why then Prophet is describing for us, I've been sent all this religion, all these books, all this power is to take you from haywan, leave your wild and animal characteristic 
and make yourself to be Ridwan, one whom Allah loves and, and, and loves to look at that character. So all the meditation in the world, all the imaginal dress, I'm this, I'm that, if you're not reaching to the ocean of power and that power it disciplines you and pushes every bad desire down and that your character is not of a beatific nature, you're doing it wrong. You shouldn't have angers, you shouldn't have uh, all these uh, explosions, you shouldn't have all these bad characteristics. So our goal is to have the, the best of characteristics wherever you go and, and every type of situation they put you to be humble, to be, to be good, to be patient and, and alhamdulillah. So Allah would address us and bless us with that reality. Ameen. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. So if someone is suffering from mental illness, is there no use to keep trying to come back and submit? Please forgive my asking. No, it's a very good question. We said that's why we said many times before there's hadith on that. That the one whom has a, a mental illness is, is not uh, at that level accountable, not somebody that can be trained. So that, that you, you can do the zikr, you can learn the teachings and how to be good character, how to do your best, <coughs> how to, to keep making your salawats. But the most important is you have to take the medicine, it's a, it's a medical condition. <coughs> that has to be dealt with. <coughs> People whom <coughs> People whom having deficiencies thinking that tariqah will take everything away and that's not the situation. Somebody emailed that my relative is 30 years in this type of sickness, please make du'a and send a wazifa to take it away. Allah puts insan in every condition and their goal is to understand their condition, take the medicines and, and treat the condition that they're in and then apply the different spiritualities and the practices that they have to do. But those practices don't take away those conditions and that shouldn't be the, the reason for coming into something. It's to be patient with whatever condition Allah put us in, Allah knows best that condition. We do our practices, if Allah wants at any time He can relieve the condition and, and change the condition of people until they change what's within themselves. But it's mental difficulty and mental illness is something that requires medicine. That's why people can't just email that I'm, I'm having you know schizophrenia and I'll send me taweez everything will be okay. That's not that easy. The shaykh has diabetes, he has to take medicine for diabetes. Another shaykh has heart problems, they take medicine for the heart problems because that's just the limitation of the physicality. You're not going to make this physicality to be 20 years old forever, this is not a magic show. They live with whatever physicality they have but what Allah is concerned is not the physical but your spiritual. So they still put their spiritual practices, they try to, to balance with the difficulty of their physicality and what the spirituality is in, in requiring. But they have to take medicine, the people who are sick have to take medicine and then because of mental difficulties the medicine then will limit them on how much they should be practicing. And you don't go deep into your zikr, too much into this, too much into that, start to sit and meditate when your mind is not working and then start to hallucinate. That's uh, difficult, that's why it's just very moderate when your condition is not well, inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidi, could you please advise us how we can best preserve the purity of our children's souls and hearts? InshaAllah, As Salaamu Alaikum wa purity of the children's heart and souls, the best that you can do is 
expose them to these teachings, expose them to the zikrs, have them sit for the live broadcast or rebroadcast from whatever time zone that you're watching, participate in the zikrs, let them hear the, the teachings and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad as they get older they begin to read the nasheed book, you can print the nasheed book out, you can buy the book on Amazon. We have our green salawat book on Amazon, you buy a couple copies for your home and your children, all our children in our center all have the book and they sit and they read the book while the broadcasts were going on at the center. They do it from home and you read the nasheed and, and you live a life of raising your children in a circle of Mawlid the Nabi And by the time they're 17, 18 and whatever destiny Allah has written for them wherever they go at least that's burned deep into their heart that they're the people of Mawlid, the, the people of love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the rest is, is in Allah's hands whatever has been written and whatever the destiny of people are. But to be raised and conditioned with this love, with this teaching, with these shaykhs so that they raise the understanding that, no we're with the shaykhs, this is our tariqah, this is our way, this is the love of Prophet and they adorn themselves with turban, they, they, they wear everything that we wear, they have their kufi, they, 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 they're raised in this understanding inshaAllah. And you give the best possible effort for them to survive these difficulties. You know it's like teaching your child how to swim really good when you know a tsunami is coming. Those whom not teaching their children how to swim good and there's a tsunami coming, well I don't know what they're expecting. The tsunami is the tsunami of, of difficulty and uh, shaitan and dajjal. If you're not teaching your children the love of Prophet and not adhering to that love, not to be deep into that love then it's very difficult to, to understand what, what, what you're preparing for that difficulty. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon, salaamun al mursaleen, wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.